8,470 pounds, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna call that an ultralight, but considering this is an extra tall, triple deep slide bunkhouse with a pretty good amount of size to it, that is not a bad weight rating on this thing. The 31KQBTS, which is quite the model number. K stands for outside kitchen at Wildwood. QB, uh, quad bunk, and TS, triple slide. This thing is a monster. And if what you're looking for is an RV that can sleep everybody, give everybody rainy day living space, uh, it, it's perfect for just leaving it parked somewhere and visiting it. Almost like, uh, you know, a, a, a really budget friendly park destination trailer, but it's fully towable and ready to go. Now, right away when you step inside a full Wildwood, you get a bigger, more open comfort and sense. And there's a bunch of reasons for it. Their color package is light and bright. They've got good accent lighting like above the slide all over the place, but they're, they are physically bigger. They're six foot nine inside. The industry standard travel trailer is six and a half foot sidewalls. Now, some are a little taller like this. Some have a vaulted roof and some do not. The six foot nine ceiling quality is something that you'll find shared between Let's see, Wildwood, all the uh, eight foot wide J flights, and all of the eight foot wide Catalinas. So there's plenty of other things that give you this height package, but it's something I really like, especially once we start getting into the shower, as you'll see in a little bit here. Now, this RV, as you can see, has uh, a seating arrangement a little bit different from the average bear. This is called the Wildwood Versa Lounge. And I, you know, we get so many different Wildwoods here. I had to kind of prepare something uh, a little bit generic, and thankfully it was prepared in this exact trailer. So enjoy the many stages of the Wildwood Versa Lounge. So starting now, keep in mind that this is just generic footage to show you how the Versa Lounge works in all its different variations. Uh, because we carry so many Wildwoods, and this is available in so many models, and it takes a lot of time to juggle between all these different formats to do my job properly, I thought I'd kind of record something a little more generic, and I think you can definitely get the idea. So first of all, in the super slides of Wildwoods, you see that they do have the blackout kind of roller shades. What is really nice is they have slide side breeze windows. I just have those covered up so that window all the way down there on the end will open for airflow, regardless of what configuration you have the seating in. So if you're looking at it right now, this is what I call traditional, where you've got yourself uh, you know, uh, a U dinette or a two bench dinette because there are variants of the Versa Lounge both ways depending on the floor plan you're looking at. And then a, uh, a sofa over here. And that is a very normal configuration. You don't, you know, see a whole lot of variance there. But if you take note, that rear, uh, well, the, the, uh, the seat back closest to us on that U dinette, it looks a little different. That's because it's removable. So if you don't want it there, it doesn't have to be there. And that's what's really cool about this thing. This is like phase one of about five of the Versa Lounge arrangements. You can just create this wide open kind of super dining lounger hybrid combo job. Now that's a very technical term, you know. Uh, I understand if you need to back the footage up a little bit to uh, to pick up on I'm putting down right there, but you, you folks, you're tuned into Halo RV. I think, I think you're pretty sharp. What's kind of cool about this is it kind of makes it easy sort of slide over the table, slide over to the seating. There's there's really no like one way that you have to use this. It's just the way that works best for you and your family. Next, it folds down into one super slide, super seating sleeper setup. I know that's a lot of alliteration for one thing in RV, but you get the idea. Now, what I love about this is this is found, the Versa Lounge setup like this is found in all super slide wildwood and x lights once again now you tend to find a lot of bunkhouse models in those families but they make quite a few couples campers too so that means like a super slide rear living couples camper can convert down into being exceptionally guest friendly and it's long enough that like i'm a tall person if i had my head on the right hand side of the frame and then there was a second copy of me sleeping with my head against that far wall you know, we, we might touch toes, but hey, no big deal. And most of the time you curl up and you're a side sleeper, you could make that work for a night for a weekend. So it's good for more than just kids. It's also like adult guest friendly, or frankly, some people have really big kids and they need a little bit more than, uh, you know, just a conventional sleeper uh, bunk setup. They need something longer. 
But one of the best and most unsung qualities of the Wildwood Versa Lounge is all of this huge tote storage space that you're looking at. This is, I believe it's 20.1 cubic foot of total tote storage. They're food safe containers, so if you want to put some crackers or Oreos or snacks for the kids in there, it's not going to be contaminated if the RV, you know, gets hot while it's in storage. You know, you could leave stuff in here if need be, if they're, especially if they're, you know, like non-perishable kind of things, but even if they're perishable stuff, you know, short-term kind of thing. You see that under the sofa, there's like a drop-down face that, uh, you know, flops down and you can pull those totes out. They're stackable. Uh, and, and frankly, guys, if you don't need them, don't use them. You know, there's nothing that says they have to stay here. They're not bolted to the camper by any stretch of the imagination. And where they're really useful is especially in bunk models, because what you can kind of do is dedicate each tote to one of the people in the RV. Like, say, the kids. And what you can do, my daughter, uh, Chloe, what I could say is, okay, Chloe, I want you to take this tote, go upstairs to your room, uh, there's clothes laying on your bed, I want you to put all those clothes in this, and then bring it back to me. And bang, the kid's packed. It's an easy way to help get the kids involved. It's also an easy way to help keep all the kids' toys and clutter and everything, uh, you know, uh, under control. Now, under the rear dinette bench on U dinette models, because remember, there are some uh, just two bench dinettes, so this part of the video may not necessarily apply. Please keep that in mind. But they leave it wide open. And I like that because you could stuff more totes or duffel bags down there if you're so inclined, but I have long legs. And when I sit at something for a while, I tend to lean forward and I like to curl my legs under me. Now, that's just me, but I looked at that and said, oh my gosh, I could actually be comfortable here. Whereas, <laughs> you know, a lot of dinettes just, they aren't comfortable for a bigger person like me. And I think I could really get along just fine on this one over here. But I think most of the time, this is how everyone's going to have this set up. At least most folks, not everybody. I tend to speak in absolutes. It's kind of a flaw that I have because it gives us this extra large stretch out, kick back, relax, cuddle up with the family napping lounge over here, whatever you want to call it. Somebody called it a fainting lounge on our YouTube channel. Is that a, is that a thing? Is that like a regional thing? Is that something from down south or out west that just this little Midwestern boy I am, I don't know about the fainting lounge where you can just walk up and faint on this thing. I don't know. You get the idea. Anyway, I, I like the fact that I could just sit in the corner. I could stretch out. And on most models where you find the Versa Lounge, like this is a good example, uh, it will actually help you face the entertainment center more organically and give you a more enjoyable experience overall. You know, there's just, there's so many good things. Like I haven't even talked about the accent lighting over the slide that makes the whole RV look bigger. There's so many good parts about this. And what's cool is when it is in uh, L lounge, fainting, napping, family cuddle mode, whatever you want to call it, you don't lose a dinette. And where I think this is perfect is if you do have kids or guests like this, uh, if you're in a bunkhouse, you still have a little spot where you could sit down, make the kiddos a sandwich or, you know, hot pocket or whatever. You get the idea. Hot pocket. And... Uh, <laughs> Please don't sue me. You could uh, still have a little spot there. They could play some little board games or something, card games in the corner, but you're still kind of right next to everybody. Everybody's still in the mix, and that's what camping's about for me. It's trying to get everybody together so that everyone has a good time. And I think this is a great way to do that. No matter your style of camping, no matter how many people are camping, this offers something for everybody. It's why I call it a Swiss Army sofa seat. And I absolutely love this thing. This is one of the features that as soon as I saw it, I went, oh man, this this changes who I'd be looking at. Like a 26D Bud Wildwood with the Versa Lounge. Ooh, ooh, that thing is, that thing speaks to me. I like that thing. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh man, that's, that's a good model. Uh, now, a big Wildwood like this with multi-slides and separate rooms, we will tend to upgrade to a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner because I think you're going to want that extra cooling power. But I love the kitchen arrangement on this. It's got that L-shaped peninsula kitchen with a huge kitchen breeze window and like a set of four easy reach outlets right there. So whether it's phone chargers, appliances, whatever, you're good to go. See that high-rise sprayer faucet with that kind of pull-down, you know, uh, you know, jab where you can hose the kids off. This is also very good for apparently washing your shoes. Although I don't think I would <coughs> use it for that. 
Anyway, you'll see that all of the countertops are a sealed edge press membrane throughout the, uh, the Wildwood lineup, which is something you find in common. Like Catalina was the first in this class to do it, but uh, Cherokee shortly after, uh, now Wildwood, J-Flight does quite a bit of it. It's a great, great feature. The uh, refrigerator over there, a lot, you're, you're just hearing all kinds of stuff, especially from Halo RV right now, about 12 volt compressor fridges. Wildwood was the first one to standardize it. They're really one of the main reasons that a lot of people have shifted to it. Wildwood uh, was the first mainstream brand to do it uh, standard, and then Cherokee shortly after. Now it's like everybody has it at least as an option if it isn't their standard fridge. And I love them, because that is a 10.7 cubic foot capacity, and it has active compressor cooling, meaning it cools much, much faster. It is completely safe to use in transit because your vehicle will just keep the battery topped off, which will keep the fridge running. This thing is awesome. It is awesome. It is the fridge I would personally want in a camper uh, if I were getting one today. Now up top here, our air vents you see, you can kind of control a little bit more. And they're not the only brand that does this. It's called vented and louvered. Those are the technical terms, meaning it can turn and close. Uh, I also like, like one of the number one things I hear like, the if you if you read these lists like top 10 things to do with a camper if you're a newbie number one change to a digital thermostat wildwood just does it the things you're going to use see feel and touch every day they are so so good at it now right before we hop in the bathroom you see you've got this big six foot nine floor to ceiling storage over here that could be pantry that could be linens toiletries it could be a combination thereof its centralized location allows it for a lot of different purposes. And they have gotten rid of their tubs. More and more brands are going to showers instead of tubs. I know that there's going to be a couple people who don't really like that idea. But like if you need to, to bathe a baby or a little kiddo, you're probably going to get the shower wand and gently hose them down anyway. Now, to give you kind of an idea, I sat next to the toilet, took a picture of myself. You can see that there's plenty of room around that. More of that sealed edge counter space, and I love the cutaway on that countertop so that if you got bigger hips or shoulders or something like that, you're going to be good to go. You'll see as we scroll our way up past the full shower surround paneling, uh, it's got a radius track uh, at the top here for some extra elbow room in the shower, and that is a full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror. Now, remember, I kept saying how you've got a taller ceiling, six foot nine ceiling. Well, kind of like around the toilet, I also took a picture of myself so you can see that there is plenty of room for a bigger person like me. Now that shower skylight, interestingly, is not a standard piece of equipment. That is an optional item that we add to pretty much all of our Wildwoods here at Halo RV, and it surprises me that more dealers don't do that. We interrupt your programming to bring you a pro tip from Uncle Josh. One of the things I really recommend doing on this floor plan is over here and maybe like make yourself a note these are the switches for the dual opposing bunk room slides. I like that they're back here so that you have to be near the slide room and you can basically like look at the slides opening or closing to an extent because we do have a full privacy door. But here's what I recommend. I barely, barely have that slide open right now and I have this one completely closed. And I've done that intentionally. When you reach your destination, I highly recommend cracking this slide as little as possible, just enough to open that door and then getting back here to make sure these drawers are not open. Because in transit, if that bumps open and it gets behind that slide flange and the slide, you just keep holding that open button, you can obviously see how you would break that thing. So if you appreciate little tips like that that we give you here at Halo RV to help you kind of preventive, I can't even talk this morning, it's early, preventatively avoid busting your camper, well, then, you know, hit that little subscribe button Maybe share a video with your friends and never know what you might learn on the next one. It gives you some extra light where you need it. Uh, it uh, gives me extra headroom if I need it, you know, things like that, because there are people taller than me. Now, it's a little dark back here right now because I wanted to show you. Mom and Dad still have control of the lights in the bunk room. There's a switch right by the door where if you want to, you can just turn that sucker right off and be like, lights out, kids. There's still some individual, like, reading lights or something uh, above each of the beds, of course. But for the most part, you can walk back here and kind of dictate what's going on. I think kids are accustomed to when the lights go out, it's time for you to go out. <laughs> now, let me uh, get this door shut. There are, this this bunk room, it, it's kind of like the Versa Lounge. This is a variant of the Versa Bunk. It only does absolutely everything. Like right now, you can see it. I've got it opened up in daytime lounge mode. 
but it can also um here let me uh let me back up a little bit it can also if we take a look fold down you've got that folding bunk above and then this sofa down below folds open to basically like a queen bed so again it's good for not just little kids but the big ones as well. It is so, so multifunctional and flexible. Uh, as we uh, work our way around here, the rear wall of this thing, it it really kind of reminds me of like an old rear entertainment fifth wheel or something like that, or like where you get a spot for the TV if you allow the kiddos uh, a TV spot. But another interesting thing, especially given our current world situation, whatever you want to call it, there are a lot of people who are doing remote learning is in, we're not calling it homeschooling. We're calling it remote learning now, and which I don't don't take the twang on my voice uh, as I, I have an opinion on this. I don't I don't have an opinion on it either way. You do whatever works for you and your family. I don't care. But this is a really neat way back here to potentially set up like a little remote learning, homeschooling, mobile home learning, schooling, whatever you want to call it, place. You know, not to mention the fact that. Um, the storage back here is awesome. Now, before I flip that bunk down, you notice that there's good storage down here. But that's not all. If we open up everything on the rear wall and take a look, you can see that there's good dresser drawer storage space. There's dual hanging closets. There's additional, like, slotted dresser storage above the entertainment center. There's, there's a lot of good stuff going on in here. Now, the cushions for this fold-down bed and the uh, uh, over here that we're looking at, and the fold down bed on the other side, you do need to slide those off before you fold them away. So I just have them tucked up here. I want to make a quick note for you though. They are the exact same size as the base of that like super cushion sofa over there. And if you want to, you could lift that up and slide them under it or just set them on top before you put the back cushions on. And you don't have to, like, slot them up there. If you don't care about the folding bunks, you can just leave those mattresses under uh, or above the, uh, like, super mega queen sofa versus bed lounge bunk thing behind us here. There's absolutely no one way that you have to use any of this. But if you are so inclined, uh, this thing can actually do a couple different things. So, uh, if you take note, it can fold down, and those two back cushions off the sofa behind me, those can fold down and uh, or slide over and make this like a big sofa space, if you're so inclined. Or, if need be, you could also just as easily, uh, obviously, use that as just a bed. Now, you do need to fold this up before you uh, close the slides, which is another reason why I like those uh, slide buttons right back there. Uh, that is a good way for you to go, oh shoot, no, I need to close that up before I close the slide so that I don't end up breaking something. So they did some very simple things. Now, power outlets, USBs, power outlets, USBs, my shoes were holding the door, uh, they, it was wanting to close on me, so pardon the shoddy camera work, I was trying to do some impromptu stuff off screen at the same time. Remember that all of our windows do open for airflow, but those, uh, blackout shades, they go down like six to nine inches past the window. So you can really blot the light out and you can see the valences and lambrequins also making sure that uh, no light bleeds around that. For those who are like me, who didn't know what valences and lambrequins were before I got into this business, those are the boxy things on top and beside the windows to block the light. Those are valences and lambrequins. <laughs> so this is a, a series of camper that typically doesn't have a TV from the factory, but that's easy stuff. They, they make it so you can slap a monster TV on the wall up there. But you see it's also got that full-on privacy door right there, as well as a clutter-cutting shoe garage right by uh, the door. Now that's right below our electric space heating fireplace, which does a, an awesome job of providing some bonus heat to the RV. And that sound bar is also Bluetooth stereo and has HDMI plugs in case you want to upgrade your entertainment. Now, if we open all that up and take a look, you see a little bit of pantrytainment storage on either side, but there's also a space down here for just a huge wastebasket. Or you could throw some shelves in there if need be. But the good news is behind door number two, we've got ourselves triple drawers down to the floor. And then you see up top here, uh, they add a shelf into that overhead cabinet to really kind of maximize the storage space that we have there. Now, quick little, another pro tip from your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. I've done separate videos on this. This is called an AC uh, chill grill or cold air dump or something like that. 
When the vents are closed, it will run the air through your central air system. When they're open, it will drop like 50% of your air in here and less of the air goes through the vents. So it can help you get your main cabin cooler faster. You don't want to do this full time though. You only want to do it to get your main cabin down to temp a little bit, then you want to close it back up. It, it can freeze up your coils and basically stop your AC unit from working. Now, privacy door for the master bedroom is a nice touch. And since this is a taller trailer, one of the things that I love that they do up here is they also give us just a switch for the overhead lights, although every single overhead light through these Wildwoods can still be individually controlled. I want to back up real quick so you can see that big viewing window over here on the camp side of the RV. So if you hear the kiddos, like if you're laying in bed and the kids got up early, or if you hear a trash panda knocking over your picnic table stuff or something like that, stupid trash pandas, you can uh, get an eye on those. And since the window's tall, like you can see right from bed, but it does open for airflow. Now this is really awesome over here. Wildwood took an old concept and gave it new life. They have a little cutaway pocket in the side of the hanging closet, and you can see how it kind of goes down into that uh, space and creates like a bucket shelf. Well, behind the door is the household set of outlets, so it's perfect for CPAP users, but you still have your phone chargers out here. Now, if you're not a CPAP user, I would still actually probably charge my phone inside there so that lights at night, if like some one of my idiot friends texts me in the middle of the night, and my phone screen ignites, it's not gonna, you know, like wake me up and blind me and bother me. I'll get to it when I'm ready to get to it, you know? Uh, that's probably why I have the automatically scheduled do not disturb feature enabled on my phone. That is probably one of the best things I've, I've ever done. But, you know, have you noticed how everything in this camper does two things? Well, if we lift this bed up and take a look, you see you've got like a shoe shelf below, all kinds of cube organizers basically acting as a dresser here in this bedroom and a plywood decked easy lift bed here also. Now, of course, we have opposing breeze windows. And just to finish off the whole package, a nice wide open wall with TV hookups. You can see the hookups above there. If you do feel like really going entertainment crazy in this camper, you absolutely can. A quick look with the slide close though before we step outside. This is really one that I think is best used at a destination. Uh, and I say that just simply due to the fact that it's obviously got tons of space. You've got the opposing slides in the bunk room and you can't really get to them with the main super slide closed. Now this is a rack and pinion slide out. So if you do need to nudge this slide like six inches to get back to the bathroom, you can do that without really violating your parking spot. So you could maybe do a quick travel stop, but mm, yeah, it's really all you want to be doing with it. I love the exterior on this because that white, uh, you know, overall paint scheme there is going to organically keep the, the heat and weight ratings down on this quite a bit. It'll make it far more comfortable. And I've got the sun staring directly at me here, so apologies there. The nose is a 67% thicker uh, aluminum, which is awesome because first of all, it's a painted aluminum. So unlike a fiberglass, which could very easily oxidize over time, this is going to basically continue to look really good for a really long time. And if you notice, very similar to like a Cherokee that we have here at Halet RV, there are very few decals and graphics going on for you to have to worry about peeling, flaking, fading over time. This is an RV that will give you a lot of value right now and continue to give you value and peace of mind down the line. That's what I like about them. Power tongue jack on the front is always a fan favorite feature, but you're going to find just like inside, there's so many little smart details. Like you can see the, the care and concern for the customer built right in this thing, starting right up front. There's the hooks for our safety chains. Most brands just let you either wrap them around the tongue and rip off your paint over time, or just let them dangle in the mud, which I don't want to do. And of course you got the little seven way plug buddy over here. Not to mention the fact that behind the area where you have you know room for two batteries, you get your first one at no additional charge at Halo RV, by the way. That's part of our no fees thing that we do here. Handy battery disconnect switch, so that when the RV's in storage, uh, even if you have your 12 volt fridge turned off, which it does have an off feature, uh, you can make sure that things like your stereo or all the circuit panels and all the appliances aren't slowly draining the batteries. Now I want to take a look at something here. You see this yellow bar on this stabilizer jack. That's called the JT Strong Arm Stabilizer. Those things are on the front and rear jacks. They give you an additional point of contact uh, basically with the frame and it virtually eliminates, I, I, I would say, 
99% of the wiggle jiggle out of the RV. I've done a test video on something like that before on a big wide body fifth wheel that we had. And with only one out of six of those jacks hand tightened down, the RV quit wiggling. I, I was, I knew that I liked them. I didn't realize I liked them that much. You'll also find that our outside doors here that flip up do have a magnet hold back for a little bit easier access and one hand operation. And then something that I absolutely love over here, the Wildwood Accessibility. They, uh, instead of using a like polypropylene one piece underbelly enclosure, they have these ABS molded plastic reinforced four by eight panel sheets uh, effectively. Uh, and what's cool about these is if you do need to drop one of these panels to access something for service reasons, you don't have to take a Stanley knife and cut your polypropylene underbelly and then duct tape it back up into place, which is really about the only thing you can do with those. It's mostly out of sight, out of mind, so a lot of people don't think about it, but now it's absolutely a non-issue. That's what I really like about these. Not to mention the fact that it is also forced air heated, which never seems to offend anybody. These Wildwoods have our rear camera ready. Those are things we can assist you with here at Halet RV. They have a 3 8 roof decking with 16 inch on center studs. It's fully walkable. That is basically the exact same roof structure that you might find in a Catalina, a Cherokee. The only difference you'd find on a Jayco is that they'd actually have plywood roof decking. Um, but again, fully walkable and holds well over 2,000 pounds, so I, I think that's fine. 16 inch on center wall studs, pretty normal. 12 inch on center floor studs, pretty normal. 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. That is normal at Halet RV. All the campers in this class we carry, whether it's the Wildwood, Cherokee, Catalina, or J-Flight, all have 12 inch on center floor studs and plywood floor decking. But not every camper in this class does. There are still quite a few brands using OSB floor decking. And the idea behind plywood is that it's just a little bit stronger and if you want a good house, you start with a good foundation, so they start with something stronger right from the bottom. And what's also cool on a Wildwood, I've done, I, you can see this on our Wildwood factory video tour that we recorded when we first joined them up in our ranks. Like, things like where the outside speakers are mounted, they actually use plywood backers on that, and they actually bring in plywood specifically for that. There's no like scrap leftover material used in here. Everything on Wildwood is a, uh, a first run prime. And then anything they don't use basically gets handed down through the, uh, this is gonna sound nasty, but like the, 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 the JV kind of products on, under some of the Forest River banners. And I, I should think of a better way to phrase that, but I think you know what I mean. Wildwood comes first. And I thought we'd take a moment to get this thing all opened up over here. So you could really see that swing out grill I was telling you about. Now you can arrange this in a couple different, you know, positions. The, uh, the little lock pin over there can be a little bit more flexible. I just kind of have it quick set right here. So what's cool about this, because your whole big camp kitchen with that larger refrigerator, it's located right on the face of the slide. That means it does stick forward into our campsite a little bit. So they gave us this really big arm so it's only just a little travel trailer two step away from getting to your, I don't know, burgers, brats, whatever it is you're cooking. Now, if you're more of a Blackstone enthusiast, absolutely nothing says you have to use that grill you use the exact same propane hookup black uh black there black stone black there uh, man it is early i am not yet caffeinated and it is showing <laughs> um so this fridge plus the fridge inside gives this thing closer to 14 cubic foot of total cold storage which is more than a lot of fifth wheels that's <laughs> that's a lot um little changes i love the little touches the little nuances in their new camp kitchen like you you know inside they went all tote crazy and they added some more of those outside and again it's genius because you know these little totes you can very easily use those things like hey here's all my you know uh utensils and stuff or picnicking or whatever and you can wrap up you probably even stuff one of your uh uh, picnic table cloth coverings in there. You know, you wrap those things up real tight. Although, I was never a Boy Scout. I was never really good at like rolling up a sleeping bag, so I don't know if I would do that. I, I would just bundle it up, wad it up, throw it in the corner, and be waiting for me when I got to my destination. But <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> TV hookups outside, if you are so inclined, if you're looking for more of a glamping experience versus a camping experience. And take note of how low the countertop is in this camp kitchen. It is inset all the way down as far as it possibly can be into this slide out. That way, you know, your sink is actually at a usable height. 
your prep space is at a usable height instead of being up here. That's the one trick with a lot of camp kitchens and big fifth wheels is like they start up here. And I mean, I'm tall, but sometimes like if I was cooking bacon, I would be, uh, you know, I'd be frying my eyebrows off on those things while I'm frying some bacon. Power awning with LED lighting. And it is easy to, you can just take two fingers and tilt that thing. Actually, why am I talking about it? It's, it, let's just show you. Two fingers, tilt, done. That's all it takes. Now what's kind of cool about this is when you hit the retract button, it will sort itself basically. And it will roll back in correctly and roll back out flat the next time. So as my wife calls it, it's uh, uh, husband proof. I'm not exactly sure what she means by that. I think it's a term of endearment, however. Outside speakers down low, getting low, so that uh, you're not blowing away the neighbors with the music of your choice. They do have neat little backlights in them. Those are actually tied to the awning lighting up top. That is an anti-slam entry door with that XL handle. You see the stable steps. Wildwood was one of the very first brands to standardize that. I think Cherokee might have beat them to it just barely, but overall Wildwood was definitely, you know, on the case. And back up front here, we have our simple side mount solar prep plug and just a massive, massive door into this storage compartment up here. Now, I love how they do this. They, all your little, like, uh, the, the top thing that we're looking at, which looks like a uh, something you'd use up the back side of cattle. <laughs> that is actually the, uh, the thing for the T-handles on the strong arm stabilizer jack so you don't have to get right down on your hands and knees to do it. The bottom left thing is for our power tongue jack if you want to manually crank it or override it. And then this guy right here, that is the drill bit adapter for your jacks. So a lot of jacks have the ability to, uh, you know, you just grab a, that drill bit adapter off a part shelf, hook it up here and go voot, voot, play an NASCAR pit crew driver. But you don't have to do that now. Wildwood's actually including it. And uh, we call it their cordless jack system. Now. Remember how I already told you about those strong arm stabilizer jacks that you see right there? You lose those with the power jack upgrade. And this is one of the very few times. I don't feel like power jacks are, are the best upgrade uh, possible because you lose the strong arm stabilizer jacks. Power jacks inherently are a little less stable than manual jacks anyway. So you're losing stability at the cost of additional money. It is nice that you just push the button. I'm not saying there are no benefit to the power jacks. I feel though, in the push-pull scheme of things, this is the better way to go on a Wildwood RV. Now that's just my opinion. I would love some input on that because I've been told we're one of the only dealers who doesn't put the power jacks on our Wildwoods. But I also feel that's because uh, we're one of the few dealers that actually takes the time to really explain why we don't do it and how it truly, I feel, I feel, is a benefit for you folks at home. So if you agree, let us know. If you disagree, I totally respect that, and I'm very interested to know that as well. I wanna make sure we have the right Wildwood here for you. Anything else you need, remember that we only do everything at Halet RV, whether it's hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.